Audio Meds is more than just a podcast. It's the home for everything hip hop. From live interviews to street smarts, trivia, and a ton of laughs. With your host, DJ Bobby Hustle and that Vato Capo. You're feeling down and need a fix. Time for Audio Meds. You wanna laugh and learn a bit. It's the Audio Meds. Host the host on this. It's the Audio Meds. Turn it up, you know it's love. Oh, the Audio Meds. Audio Meds. They're good for you. Hey, we back. We back. Yes, sir. Back. Yes, sir. I know y'all thought we wasn't coming back, but yes, we are back for season two. If you haven't season noticed, two. look around. We got some new digs. It's your boy, <laughs> DJ Bobby Hustle, and my guy. That Vato. Capo, guaranteed to get you plugged for $257,000 and 49 cents and a pack of Ooh. fruit by the foot. Oh, oh, fruit by the foot. I fuck with that. Foot. I fuck you with know, that. I had to throw it yeah. back, man. <laughs> hey, copper. And that's a discounted rate. That's a discounted rate. That's a discounted rate. rate. That's this yeah, because we're yeah. back for the season. We're gonna we're gonna cut you a deal, get you back in the dough. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Who we got? Yes, who we got today, Capo? Who we got oh, today? Oh, Bob, you already know, man. You already know. I, I always get hyped right now because it's no secret. We always have super dope guests on every dose of audio meds, and today is no different. Today's guest hails from Atlanta, GA, where he earned his name by curating and hustling mixtapes in high school, which, I mean, he got to a point where he just wasn't feeling the music he was listening to, so he started creating his own and started producing, which led to him working with some of your favorite artists, such as is young M.A., uh, uh, Rich the Kid, um, Yellow Wolf. Uh, I mean, dog, the, the list could go on and on. This man is not only an audio engineer, a DJ, a producer. He recently added consulting to his uh, resume. He's a man of many hats, a man of many talents. And I, one, one thing I can say is he's one of the most humble dudes that I've ever had the pleasure of working with within this industry. And it's an honor to be able to call him one of the homies. I need y'all to make some noise for the one, the only, DJ Burn One. Hey! hey. DJ Burr. What, what an intro, dog. Hey. Oh, man, hey. Hey. It's all what up, man. Thank oh, y'all. Thank y'all for having me, man. Thank y'all yeah. for having me. Nice to meet you, Bobby. You know, hey, but man. Capo, bro, you're one of the best people I, I've met too in this industry, bro. Ever since, bro, it's it's probably been 10 plus years. And yeah. every time I've come to Nashville, bro, you've always rolled out the red carpet. You know, anytime there's opportunities or anything, anytime you can shine a light or what I got going on, you've always checked in on me and tried to uh, support what I've had going on, whether it be with KD or Ritz or anybody. Um, and I just want to say thank you for the support, man. Absolutely. Hey, shouts out to support, man. Shouts out to support. It goes both ways. It goes both ways, man. I appreciate Likewise. it always, man. You always showed love, bro. So, Burn, with that being said, man, I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes. Tell me about your journey, bro. Tell me about your journey. 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 How's everything been going with this with this so-called pandemic that's kind of shut the world down? Man, yeah, it's been, um, you know, just going with the flow, you know, <laughs> going with the flow, um, you know, different things. I was doing a lot of, like, silent discos and stuff like that, uh, DJing before the pandemic hit. Um, so that kind of slowed down, um, of course, like all the playing gigs and stuff. But, you know, on the bright side, it did just, you know, pretty much have me even, even more focus on, all the projects I've been working on, getting better at mixing and mastering, um, doing more consulting. A lot of people, like you said, a lot of people have been hitting me up for consulting. Um, and so it's just been nice to, um, I mean, it's, it's nice to live in a digital era where you can do everything pretty much from the house. Real shit. So even Real when shit. I'm doing NFTs, I got into NFTs heavy about a year ago. Um, yeah. And bro, we sold like six pieces with this uh, kid, Caleb Johnson from New Zealand. Never met him. Mm -hmm. You know, like sold a piece with uh, this girl Samantha. Um, oh, I can't remember her last name right now. Visuals by Sam on on Twitter though. Um, I sold a piece with her. That was my first piece. She's from England. You know, um, wow. Man, the people like all over the world. We sold a three minute time lapse piece with mm -hmm. this guy named Noe from South Korea. Oh, three yes, minutes no. of time lapse footage of downtown South Korea, like cyberpunk style. Wow, well, okay, I see. Okay. I see that shit. I see that shit. That's dope as fuck. Yeah, I live in Seoul, yeah. man. So. Any it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's been, dope as fuck, bro. Well, I'm online selling it for cryptocurrency, man, bro. Shit, right. I never thought I'd be even involved in keeping it real. You yeah, know? like oh, I've man. had my homies try to get me into Bitcoin and all that, and honestly, I don't care about money. I care about music. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I'm like, I just don't even care about investing on it. I'm like, I just don't care, dog. You know, it's like it's the truth. Yeah, I just don't give a fuck. So, I'm like, I feel like I'm that like NFTs brought me into the world of cryptocurrency, and now I'm understanding. I'm like, okay, this is like a whole new world right here. Oh yeah. man, 
the, the funny thing is, is like I've been in crypto since about 2017 and I, I'm real um, heavy into crypto. I'm, that's one of my right. main streams. Uh, it's funny that that's you was talking about NFTs because like I'm I'm getting into the NFTs more like I've been buying some. I'm doing a little flipping, but I've been into the NFT games. Have you been into the NFT games yet? Man, I'm just starting to uh, see see more of them and uh, try, kind of trying to um, get my feet wet a little bit. You know, it's interesting. Right. It's different. You know, when I got in, it was just us releasing NFTs with different uh, mm -hmm. visual creators from around the world mm -hmm. would score the pieces and then put them out uh, as a collaboration. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you said, now it's like it's it's a world of opportunity. There's so many games and different things going on. You can make money in the games. In the game. Yeah. People are paying people to play the yes. game. Yes. Different, you know, different countries and smaller countries. And man, it's, it's a whole new world. So, <laughs> so it's like hey, we're hey, lucky Ruben. that the pandemic hit now. Right, like the 1900 pandemic, right. or one of the other pandemics. Like... <laughs> you know, we'd have really been in the house, just stuck. Like, what the fuck we about to do? You know, shit, um, shit. you know. Luckily, right. I had time to work on our garden and different shit. You know, so it's like <laughs> trying to get more, hey. you know, self sufficient and shit. Yeah. Hey, real quick, man, for the for the viewers that may not know what an NFT is, can one of y'all break that down? Okay, okay, I'll give you a little bit because with NFTs, there's different, shall I say, applications of it. So um, basically what the acronym NFT stands for is non-fungible token. So okay. broken down real easily, it means that it's a token that, that can only be one of one or one of 10 or however that cannot be duplicated. It can't be copied. It's always an original and you can prove it because it's an NFT. You can verify the transaction and see who gotcha. signed it. But basically it's unduplicatable, uncopyable. <laughs> you know and, I mean? and that's, isn't that the one that dude sold from Firefest or the other... Of the cheese sandwich, isn't what? He, did he get? He do something like that with the NFT? When you think, you when you talking that? about art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sold that shit for a crazy amount of money, but it was just like a cheese sandwich. Yeah, that, yeah. You know that came from the fire festival. That's just wild, bro. That's just it's wild. It's funny because, like, right now as we speak, I have some Benmar dragons on the farm mining me cryptocurrency right now in my sleep. So. <laughs> wow. Wow. There you go. There you go. And, and you know what's so crazy? And speaking of cryptocurrency and NFTs and all this off the grid stuff, I think it's a perfect time for us to dive head first down the rabbit hole. So I burn agree. one. I don't know if you've ever seen the show before. And for those of you out there who haven't seen the show before, this is the segment where we dive head first down the rabbit hole and we're gonna teach you some shit you didn't even know you didn't even know. You ready, burn one? Like this. Yeah. Here we go. It's time to take a trip head first down the rabbit hole where you learn some shit you didn't even know. You didn't even know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Tuning in live from the rabbit hole in the bunker. That's it. So this is the, the segment bunker. of the show where we teach you some shit you didn't even know you didn't even know. If you've seen the show before, you know we talk about some creepy and some cool stuff. Well, today is definitely one of those creepy cool segments. I'm sure that everybody watching has at least one social media account on at least one platform. And so you know that we're in the era of the clout chasing called on camera. I'm about to go live on your ass Karen era. With every video clip getting posted, mm -hmm. we're becoming more and more desensitized from videos of middle-aged ladies fighting in Bath and Body Works to live streams of the police murdering unarmed men on camera. And it doesn't seem to be an end in sight, you know. So with all that clout chasing and going going live and all that stuff, it seems like they want us to do it more and more to the point that they're making it easier and easier. And your boy, Mark Zuckerberg, the head honcho over at Facebook, if you haven't heard, they just did a partnership with Ray-Bans you know, to drop mm -hmm. what's called the Ray-Ban Stories. These are basically mm -hmm. cool looking sunglasses that have cameras built in to stream straight to Facebook Live. Now, of course, Facebook's not the first company to try this. Um, Snapchat has their spectacles. Of course, Apple has some they're working on and you know about Google Glass and a few other companies have doing it. You know, but with two major companies like Ray-Bans and Facebook, you know, it's more likely that it's gonna hit the mainstream. So. My question to you, DJ Burn One, you know, let's say, you know, you're at an event, studio, party, whatever, you walk in, everybody has on these glasses going live. Would you feel awkward with, or would you be cool with complete strangers filming your every move every time you turn around? 
I feel like I automatically assume we're under a surveillance state anyway. And I feel like anytime <laughs> I go in public, I'm being filmed already, bro. This is <laughs> right. like, this is like it's new for people to do it so boldly in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. But absolutely. When I go out, I know I'm being filmed for fucking sure. Not because of who I am, but just because people are being filmed. Like, you know, just there's cameras everywhere in Atlanta. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. everywhere, dog. So I assume as soon as I leave outside, everything is being filmed. Right, you know? right. That's real shit. Not only that, man, it's like if you go to the fucking club anyways, everybody's holding their phone in the club and filming everything. It's no mm-hmm. different. The whole thing, different. Like you said, going live. That's, <laughs> this is going whole live. Generation. It's a whole this generation. Whole generation, you know. It's crazy. Just, it reminds me of that uh, that movie. It's one of them old school ninety movies. Was it Johnny Mnemonic or Virtuosity when they was like saving their memories to hard disk? It had Angela Bassett mm-hmm. in it or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like we're yeah. slowly going into that phase, man. And it's it's wild, man. It's wild, man. That, that's yeah. like that neural link. That's like that neural yeah, neural link with uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. But yeah, shouts out to Burn One who ain't afraid to be caught on camera in his draws. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah, that's man. what's up. That's what's up. So burn one, man. I wanna, I wanna take it back because there might be, a, there might be people out here that aren't familiar with, with the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing all kinds of shit. You always have your hands in all kinds of shit. But a lot of people don't know, man. Like, where did you start? Did you, you started DJing first or producing first? started doing uh i guess bootlegging first you know i was like <laughs> i was one of the first kids in school that learned how to get on aol chat rooms through a 56k dollar connection and <laughs> download music you know um, yeah. so bro, it was so, it was like it had to have been the most nascent form of piracy online you know but it was like a fabulous album or you know what i'm saying it wasn't yeah. like a lot of shit and I, so basically what i'd do is i'd find like the top you know maybe eight songs, like the top eight at eight on B103 here, and put those eight songs on a mixtape and sell those at school. So I'd be like burning CDs and stuff like that when I was in ninth, tenth grade. And then okay. these girls named Ecstasy went to school with me. They just happened to be signed to TI. And so mm-hmm. when I was in 11th grade and they were in 12th grade, I don't know, they had graduated. So I was a senior. Um, I was like, yo, would uh, y'all get y'all and TI to host a mixtape for me? It was like my second real mixtape. And, uh, and they said, yeah. And so they, they called my phone. They all, him and the PSC all called and left, left a voicemail on my phone. And so in high school, I had to tape right before trap music dropped, hosted by T.I. So as soon as he came out, uh, you know, it like, really after that, that just put me on the path. So every day I'd get off school and just drive around 285 and drop CDs off on consignment and just learn, you know. I learned by failing and fucking up and right not, uh, not doing the right thing and just having people like Tobago, DBS Sound, be like, man, you need to write on your CDs. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like if, if your CD gets thrown in the file, how do you know it's it? But it's really that basic yeah. sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't fucking know until somebody tells you, like, "Hey, dog, this is," you know. Yeah. Until people yeah. know. But luckily, I had people around me, OGs and mentors and people that were just like, "Yo," you know, just wanted to be like, "Shit, this don't even make sense." Like, fucking <laughs> fix this, you know. And right, so that right. was just like my whole career. And so I went from uh, doing mixtapes to, um, like, I, I think I got with um, Gucci. Gucci and Dro and did their first two tapes. Like I did Chicken Talk. I talked Gucci into doing chick, uh, Chicken Talk. Yeah. Tapes. He didn't yeah. even know my mixtapes. I like gave him the whole game about it. If you read his autobiography, he tells a story in there. Uh, if I told him about mixtapes and kind of presented him the opportunity, and I told him about it a year before we actually did Chicken Talk. But so were you? Uh, so you were in high school. Out and he was already kind of like he already knew So Icy was gonna hit, even though he wasn't popular at the time. He just knew So Icy yeah. was gonna hit. And so he was like, I don't really know about a mixtape. I don't really, I'm not interested in that. And so like a year later, things had slowed down. I think he went to jail and came out and put out a song and didn't do too well. And people's feelings was like he was kind of over. And so he called mm-hmm. me back. He was like, yo, the thing you were talking about, I was like a mixtape. He was like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so we spent like a month. I was like recording them and we had a bunch of material already. And so we just kicked it for like a whole month and just recorded. Um, and so we kept a bunch of other stuff. And I basically like decided to make it two CDs. I picked the order. I, I essentially mastered it in the most rudimentary way I knew at the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know what I was doing. I definitely fucked up Swing My Door, but that's what everybody loves. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, they love the fucked up bass. Um, and I, I even took the picture for the cover, you know, so I pretty much like executive wow. produced that project and then I actually distributed it too, um, which, you know, it's funny. I say I started bootlegging, but really it helped and hampered Chicken Talk bootlegging. You know what I'm saying? It came right yeah. back on me, you know, it was like, it wasn't like I was no kingpin, but you know, it's funny, like, the same CD store I worked at, 
ended up when I left them bootlegging my shit, you know? So I'm like, oh, it's, just part of, it's just part of the game. I was going to talk game. to you for a little bit. And I realized, it, I'm like, if you're successful, that was part of the, you know what I'm saying? Part of the game. It, it yeah, that was quick, part of the game, uh, especially after mm-hmm. after the raid happened. You know, shit yeah. kind of got scarce, you know? So I'm yeah. like, couldn't really, couldn't really blame them. And that, and that's hence the name of uh, Burn One, right? Burn One. Because I was going to ask you. CDs. Yeah, you know, I, was, I, was I thought I was blowing trees this whole time, dog. <laughs> Right, exactly. I wasn't even smoking then. I was burning mm. CDs and selling them for like five bucks, and then I got the job at, at this mom and pop store called Super Sound, and we got trap music early. This was all at the same time. We got trap music early, so I was selling them. I had them like in the plastic before it came out for twenty bucks, um, and people were like, "Burn me one, burn one, burn one, burn me one," and I was like, "I didn't have a DJ name. I had a really whack DJ name. It was like DJ Chaos or something." <laughs> I was like, "Ah, uh, burn one." I was like, "I like that," you know. So I was like, "DJ Burn One." And I was on the phone with my homies, and uh, there was this guy from Macon named J.A. Uh, he passed away, uh, rest in peace, you know. But he, uh, in one part of his song, it broke down, and he just said, burn one, burn one. And my other homie, while we were on the phone, he was like, man, you should put the chronic, that match, under there. And it literally went, Psh, burn one, Psh, burn one. I was like, damn, like literally just <laughs> on the phone. Uh, it was my homie's goddamn being 29, you know. Um, okay. But it was, man, that shit was just wild, you know. And then I just, I just ran with it, you know. Hey, the best nicknames come when they're given to you and they just happen. And yeah, I, I know you, right. you was talking a lot about CDs. So for all the Gen Ys, Gen Zs, a CD is a compact disc. It's a silver round piece <laughs> of plastic that we used to insert into a stereo to actually listen to the music. It didn't beam through the air via MP3. There you go. There you go. Oh, I actually got a, a chicken Oh, he thought. actually got the I actually got a physical thought. copy. Wow. wow! Hey, were, weren't you, weren't you part of uh, um, uh, the Trump music? Uh, yeah, uh huh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's a yellow. That's one? crazy. Dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. yellow of Trump music, dog. Yo, I remember I used to bump that shit, and that that was before I even knew you. But I, I used to love up. that fucking tag, dog. And I, man, I fuck. That was that was like one of my favorite projects, you know, because he, you know, Yellow West got ties to Nashville. He he went to high school in Antioch and shit. So when I oh, heard yeah. that, I was like, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, had no clue, man. Did you did you pro, did you produce it or you just DJ like mix yeah, it? You know, it was interesting. I was just getting into production at the time, um, and he had did a record called Country Girls. Um, right before he left to do Trump music. I, I gave him the beat and then we met Jay Dirk put me and him together from Baller's yeah. Eve. And so we yeah. sat down uh, and met at um, Elmire or something like that. And anyways, he played me the song that he did. He had cut like a hook and maybe a verse on it. And then him and Willpower went out to to uh, Alabama and fucking cut, cut all the records for Trump music. I think he came back yeah. and did a couple records with Malay. That's right. But that's I wasn't right. even, I wasn't even producing really at the time, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy, dog. You were getting connected with everybody, bro. You were just falling in, falling into this shit. <laughs> yeah, man, it's pretty interesting how things happen. It yeah. really is. That that just really happened because I was fucking around with Phil, and mm-hmm. I randomly met Yellow Wolf on the trap going have video shoot. Like Yellow Wolf was just like sitting on the floor by the, by this uh, by the store. He was just like sitting on the ground. Someone was like, it's Yellow Wolf. I was like, I'd heard a bunch of his random mixtapes, like yeah. trying out all these different styles and different stuff. And I was yeah. like, man, I was like, I like that shit. And um, J Dirk ended up linking us up like maybe a month month or so later, like yeah. sitting down, like, y'all should do a project. Yeah. I don't know what made him do that. You know? I've, I've yeah, that's crazy. Like that in my life. Um, it's the yeah. universe, man. It's the universe. It's yeah, somebody put me on Sarlito. You know, somebody put me on Sarlito in that same way. Like, because basically I came about making beats because I got. Frustrated with the music I was getting. This was when was around the time I was working with Freddie Gibbs and Phil. Mm. And a lot of the music, I felt like it was a time where people were getting out of sampling and getting into original music. But it wasn't like now where you have these really dope loop makers and stuff. It was just kind of like bland. And I was like, man, either I can complain about this or I can make beats like I want to hear them. And so I was like, I'm just going to take uh, a year off and make five beats every day. And that's what I did. And I was like, I'm not going to play for anybody. I was like, I don't want nobody to fuck with me because of who my mixtape brand is I want people to fuck with the beats because they like them. And so I didn't plan for nobody. And my homie, this other guy, J.A., not the same one who did my tag, this other J.A. from my 24-hour grind, he came over and he was like, man, do you know All-Star Starlito? He was like, he just changed his name from All-Star to Starlito. He was like, he had the Grey Goose song? I was like, oh, yeah, he's hard. 
he was like, he's doing some shit, man. He was like, he'll be dope on these beats, man. He's like, these would be hard. And so I sent Starlito five, six beats. He sent me back five. I sent him another six. He sent me back four. And that <laughs> that ended up being Renaissance Gangster. Mm. And did that knock me out? Yeah, you back. For a second. You back. For a okay. second. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I know you said. I was, was going to ask you about that, too. Yeah. Go ahead, Bobby, my bad. Yeah, yeah no, I, 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 I know what you like said. 14, 13, 14 beats. And he, he recorded to like 11 of them, and that was it. That's dope, mm. though. That's dope. So you said they used to be really dope loop makers. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Now. Now. Be. Now yeah. there's dope. Now, loop. now there's really dope loop makers. So, what do you mean by that? Do you mean like just oh, like making make... original samples, like original copies? Yeah, okay, like for spice and things like that. Like, yeah. bro, you see so yeah. many sample packs mm-hmm. online, and, all day, and different yeah. people making samples for producers to sample. So we 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 were part of the original beginning of that, along with Illmind and different people, eight, nine, ten years ago. And so mm-hmm. that's why a lot of those placements you're talking about, like the Young Ma, um, the Rich, we did a uh, not the Rich the Kid. Uh, we did that. Me and Spence did that uh, on the spot. But like um, uh, uh, the Jadena Tribe, that was a sample that we mm. did. Uh, Mike and Keys and Lil C uh, mm. did the beat and got it to Jadena, and it became one of his singles uh, from his last album. And then we did Lil Dirk and Nicki Minaj uh, from two projects ago. Called, oh, wow. Um, yeah. Extravagant? Yeah, Extravagant. Um, and that was off a of sample too. And so we've had like a lot of success with with giving uh, producers original samples. But now it's, it's a thing that there's mm-hmm, composers mm-hmm. and people realize that even if they're not dope at beats, or even if they're dope at beats, it's just a dope side hustle to you know give give people samples and stuff like that. So I feel yeah, like yeah. just on a whole, right. original music is better now than than when mm-hmm. we were doing like around trap going ham time. It was just a little staler and a little more like maybe just a phantom keyboard, but somebody couldn't really play it that well. Not not saying right. trap, yeah. but around that time, that was kind of the thing. Like, people had, like, a rolling phantom or this or that, but it wasn't like their DJ tune, and they just knew how to whip that home, you know? It was just like, right. they yeah. were just kind of using some sounds, and it was just like, brah, brah. And it yeah. wasn't Shotty Red, you know what I'm saying? Shotty Red, that, <laughs> you know, Shotty Red and Toon ushered in, like, a whole new thing, you know? Or so, yeah. Sounds. Oh, yeah, real shit. Yeah, yeah. but, I mean, it went, it, I mean, it, it has, you, you, you have your errors, because, I mean, you got to look at, like, what they were doing with the chronic and shit, and you know, and and all the West Coast. I mean, even too short shit, having people come in and play live instrumentation and all that, mm-hmm. you know, bass and all that stuff. And then it kind of phased out and went to the back to the like you said, the Phantom and all that shit. And you know, what I'm saying and everybody was sampling like crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, nah. I mean, it's it's definitely like I see that that live instrumentation coming back. Right. Big yeah. Burnt. Man, he looks cool. He looks super cool on his face. What? <laughs> there oh. he goes. Okay, he snapped back. He snapped back. But okay. yo, burn one. So like, man, I can't even lie, bro. You you a real smart dude. Like you went, you know, you use the sample packs to get to get placements, man. You burn his CDs. You started out bootlegging. You got a lot of knowledge, man. Like you are smart. And when you're mm-hmm. smart, you got smart answers. You know what I'm getting at, right? Capo. <laughs> I think Make it's it about that time. That time. If you've seen the show before, then you know what time it is. If you haven't seen the show before, well... That's right. It's time for Street Smarts Trivia Game with your host, DJ Bobby Hustle and that Vato Capo. Guaranteed to get your plug. And we're back again. <laughs> perfect. perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. So this yeah. is Street Smarts Trivia. Basically, we're going to do a little bit of uh, Street Smarts Trivia, a little hip-hop trivia. Uh, we got a few different rounds. Um, this category is called Hip-Hop History. Basically, we're just going to ask you a question, and all you got to do is give us an answer. Easy as that. Bro, y'all man. even got the hoodie on the dude. How do y'all know me like this? Man, y'all who like Googled you, hard. man? You Google know is powerful. 24-7, year-round, 365. <laughs> 365, he's got Gotta his sucker going on. All right. Up. All right, so this first category is hip-hop history. We're just going to ask you a question. You got your mind ready? All yeah. right, here we go. Whose verse did Pip C almost not sign off on because the artist sent it back and cut the drums out of their vocals? Was it A, Jay-Z, B, Andre 3000, or C, Young Buck? Definitely Andre 3000. Going with B on that one. Is that your final answer? Yes, sir. 
It was Andre 3000! Yeah. Uh, get that yeah. massive confetti! Hey. <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff Bridges and a and Job Records in the 2000s said that Pimp C wasn't fond of Andre 3000's verse on the 2007 International Players Anthem, although it was less about the lyrics and more about the drums being removed. But, sounds like it worked out for the best. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, ima- I couldn't imagine that. All the drums to drop. Like, <laughs> That's what you wait like, for. Where the drums go, man? Like, what? <laughs> Take it <shit> off. <laughs> All right, um, you did good on that. Hey, you did good. Could you imagine that song without Andre Three Thousand? Like, I don't know, Doug. That would have been a hard pill to swallow. Well, I did love it before is the original Project Pat song, "Choose You." That was. Yeah, still uh, love it. But yeah, that classic. song, the International Players Anthem, yeah, you can't really see it without Andre. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, pretty good. Capo, I think this is your favorite category. Man, who said that shit? This is called Who Said That Shit. Basically, we're going to read you a song lyric. All you got to do is tell us who said that shit. Here we go. Old heads taught me, youngin' walk softly. Carry a big clip that'll get niggas off me. Keep coking coffee, keep money smelling malty. Change is cool to cop, but more important is lawyer fees. Who said that shit? He's a deep thought. He's a deep thought. <laughs> Damn. I got nobody. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You want to just throw somebody out? Or are you going to throw in the towel? MC Shan. Oh, wow. <laughs> Final answer? <laughs> oh, oh. He took it way oh. back. He took MC Shan. I got a reason why I said that, though. I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I, I, I literally have no idea. Oh. It was Jay Z. You'll never change. And I, you know, I was going to say, I was gonna say Jay Z. It was, bro, you know, it's like the cadence. I feel like if you would have wrapped it, you know what I'm saying? That would have been too easy. I gotta try right. to throw you off your game, man. I gotta try to throw you off. <laughs> okay, we got another one for you. Another chance to redeem yourself. This is called Hood Classic. I know we all grew up watching Hood Classics, so we're gonna play you a movie clip. All you gotta do is tell us what movie it is. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Now this is what you call a Hood Classic. You said five G's, nigga. Five you gonna G's, stop acting man. like you only nigga get money, man? Make it ten, man. What's wrong with Make you, man? Make it ten G's, you pull Nigga, we getting more money than you, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a G for every bump on hey. your face, nigga. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> hey, what's, what you laughing at, man? You need to put your man on. He look bad. Tell that nigga to hit you with an ounce of something or something. You know this is my Thursday car, man. On Saturday I'm breaking out with something new, alright? Saturday report your face and blow up. What movie is that? <laughs> he just shook his head. He just said, Juice. I, 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 can't, I can't call off the top of my head, bro. I'm not. Final answer? Yep, 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 Juice, yep. Uh, this is oh, it was painted oh, classic. Cool. Oh, hey, you gonna stop acting like you only nigga get money, yeah. man. Make a check. Oh, that's that's a class. Class. You get more money than you, man. You know what I'm saying? I got yeah, man. That's the good one. It's so good. Hey, what's good with you laughing at, man? You need to put your man on. He look bad. Tell that nigga to hit you with that. It's all good. No, it's all good. We got one more chance for you to redeem yourself. I know I'm bombing it over here. I'm getting nah, my, I'm getting my hip-hop good, passion broke over here. Oh, no, no. You got, you got another chance this round right here. So this one right here is... Uh, excuse me, I'm going to need to see some identification. This is called ID check. Basically, we're going to read your government name. Just tell us who it is. Here we go. My government name is Patrick Leroy Brown. Am I... A. Danny Brown. B. Booty Brown. C, Sleepy Brown. C, Sleepy Brown. Final answer? Yes, sir. It was Sleepy hey. Brown! Hey, get that messy confetti! <laughs> I knew that because we have a song together on the Superfly reboot soundtrack that came out uh, about three years ago. That's right. That's right. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. He all right, all right, get that man an applause for, <laughs> for uh, two out of four. That's 50%. Two out of four. Hey, that ain't bad. It's a 50-50 chance. You could live, you could die, but you might get rich or you might go broke. You never know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right. Hey, so, hey, so, so you said you had a song with Sleepy Brown, man. What was it like working with him, dog? Like, I know, like, that's, 
that's legendary, bro. Man, what a dream come true. I remember listening to, uh, like, still smoking on the radio. Greg Street would play it to end his show. So, like, just hearing it growing up on the radio from Sleepy Steam, that song, all the time. Like, I just love that song. And then hearing him on all the Outkast stuff and mm-hmm. his own material. Like, working with him was incredible because we got to finish the record at Sanconia mm, and man. like I walked I played the bass line for, for um, most of the part of the song I came up with it and so when I get there he's got Preston Crump there who played the bass lines on like Art of Storytelling, Elevators like all the Outcast stuff like all Damn. like so many records um, he's like yo Preston you got your five string Preston's like yeah he's like yo Burn can you teach him the bass line I was like my favorite bass player, you're gonna ask me to teach him a bass line, you know? Like, I, I wrote, like, fuck. You know, my hands were so nervous, I'm shaking. I'm like, do, 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 do. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you see what I'm doing? He's like, oh, yeah. But anyway, so now, now Preston Crump is one of my one of my best friends, which is pretty beautiful now after like three years of developing a beautiful friendship. But that, and then um, Chance, who played the keys on Sorry, Miss Jackson and Liberation, and so many records was in there. And I was able to be like, hey, man, uh, would you play something on the record? Just because he was in the room. I was like, you, we play something? And he was like, you want to play on like a, a MIDI keyboard? Or, or what are you hearing? And I told him, um, I was hearing like, because he played on Rich Boys. Um, um, and I love you. Uh, that record with uh, Big Boy. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, something with those cats, those like keys that are just falling. And he was like, okay. I was like, no, not a MIDI keyboard, though. I was like, isn't there a baby grand in, in San Antonio? They got a baby grand piano. Mm-hmm. And so we got a Renegade. Uh, my partner who's an engineer up there. He plugged up the baby grand. And, man, he, like, Chance just played me for, like, 20 minutes, just a, a medley of almost all the Outcast and Dungeon Family stuff he had played. Oh, on. my God. From, like, the remix of the Players Ball and all that shit, man. I was, like, I was in tears, bro, just sitting there with Ray Murray listening to him play. I was like, oh, my God. And then he played and blessed the record, and it was just, like, amazing. And I'm working on arranging the female background records on the female background vocals. Big Boy walks in. I'm like, what is life, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Your life is like... Your life is like, like karma giving you the best that it has to offer. (laughs) The universe is like... It's like letting me know all this hasn't been for nothing. For nothing. You know, shit. like it hasn't because I've fucking been trying, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. You know, like I've Damn, been trying bro. a long time, bro. So it's like, it's good to have those moments and, you know, sitting there with Ray Murray and him listening and just being like, man, this shit is dope. You know, Ray Murray from Outcast Yoda, you know, Yoda mm-hmm. being like, you know, like this shit's hard, you know? I'm like, man, it was it was just a beautiful moment. And Sleepy Brown's so dope. Like, he played bongos on the record and, just the way he arranges his vocals and how he allowed us to like work on the bridge and everything, man. It was, it was just a dream come true to be around around them. Um, yeah, I've been lucky history, to kind right? of be taken in by certain factions of of Atlanta, Grand Hustle, Early, um, and DJ Tunk, like a big, big, you know, mentor in my life. Early, Mr. DJ, Dungeon Family, definitely. Um, big gift. I got a record with him right now that's been playing on uh, TV. It's in jam on BT Jams, and. Uh, mm-hmm. BT Jams and Yo and TV Raps. Mm. Uh, we got a record called Night Drop that's been in rotation. So I produced it, mixed and mastered it, and shot the video. Oh, uh, wow. It's, it's John William Flautis featuring Big Gift, Night Drop. Y'all go check that out. It's, it's yeah. really cool. We definitely gonna um, check it out. Yeah, man. We're, we're one man army, you know, like, That's what I was about to say. You a one man band. I learned how to do so much because sometimes I fell into it and sometimes I couldn't find the right people. The right people that either met my quality level, my urgency, or... You know, maybe I didn't have the money to pay somebody else. So I kind of, like, mm-hmm. learned certain things myself. And then videos, I just fell into it because I was with Scotty. And he was working with B.O.B. He was about to sign with him. And I just borrowed my homie's 60D little Canon camera. And uh, I was just filming them in the studio and just showed it to him. And, like, three days later, his cameraman, B.O.B., canceled a video shoot. And he just hit me up. He was like, yo, you want to shoot this video tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, sure. Yeah. I called my homie SP. I didn't even have a real camera. I called my homie SP. I was like, yo, um, you want to shoot a video tomorrow, dog? <laughs> so we co-directed that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Co-edited it. And I watched what he did, watched what we did. And, you know, the next one shot on my own and have another partner join and kind of, like, formed a little team. You know, I, I work well in teams. Like, my Five Points Bakery, me, Walt Live, Go Ricky Going, Anna Belina. That's my production team. We do production, sound design, write songs. They're artists as well. They got their own music. Um, 
put all of the original samples together and everything. And then with the video, um, I shoot it's myself and uh, my partner Ben uh, and my partner B. He's, he's been helping out, but man, it's 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 been beautiful. Oh, anyway, so BLB hit me up and I shot six videos for him that year. Yeah. And I learned how to shoot videos just by I man, I throw myself into shit and just kind of just learn. I feel like once you unlock creativity in one way, you realize how to do it. Like there's nothing holding you back from anything other than just applying yourself and spending time. Mm. Last week I gave my son a basketball. He could not dribble. This way he's fucking dribbling. You know, it's like wow. really anything you spend time on, you are gonna get better at. That's right. right. You you, mm. you get you get out of it what you put into it, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. it stops being so mystifying and you just get to work. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, it, that's man. the inspiration of the day is like anything you put your mind to, you can do. Burn one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouts out to burn one. <laughs> You know, but but that's dope. You know that you do so many things because I'm I'm like you. Like I love learning things, and like YouTube is my best friend. Like I I go to YouTube University wow. all day. You know. So Every let me day. ask you this though. Like sometimes do you do you feel like that maybe you're spreading yourself too thin, or you're trying to do too many things instead of honing on one thing, or do you have a balance where you feel like I'm great at this now, so now I can learn how to do this and still do that. Yeah, I'm feeling like as I'm mastering things, it's allowing things to come together. At certain points, I've definitely felt stretched. But now as I settle into being really comfortable mixing and mastering, extremely comfortable producing, really comfortable shooting videos and pictures and stuff, it makes everything a lot, um, uh, I don't know, simpler. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's like yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, like I think I think it's one of those things is once you – once you kind of figure out how to streamline something and it's just kind of moving on its own, it's like, all right, now I, I can jump out and start applying that to something else and getting this ball rolling. And then you have multiple things moving at once and you can kind of jump in, jump out, you know what I'm saying, and just yeah. move it. And as you master things, it's like my mixing, at a certain point, I was really trying shit out. And so some mixes took like two and a half weeks for me to really hone in on that shit and figure it out because I'm trying out so many different techniques and watching tutorials and figuring out what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And mm -hmm. I don't know it until I send it to somebody and they're like, that shit sounds terrible, you know, or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it might take me a bunch of going back and forth, a bunch of versions. And now no notes, you know, the first mix, yeah. we just did a tree sound the other day. We're offering my company, the five points bakery team, the tree sound studios in Atlanta. We're offering in house mixing and mastering out of there. We just did our first one the other day and no notes. There was no notes. It was like, perfect. He was like, I was trying to find something wrong with that. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. He's like, wow. bring the rest of my songs to you. It's, comf it's great to be in that space and go up there and I didn't really know, super know the board, hadn't really worked on the SSL like that. I've used the plugins though, you know, I'm prepared, I watch videos, I watch stuff. And so when I walked in there, I was comfortable knowing what I knew. And once we figured a couple of things out, it was like, bam, bam, bam. So now it's like, as you master these things, they don't take as long to do anymore either. So where like, yeah. I felt stretched before, because I'm like, damn, I'm mixing. But it's like two mixes are taking up all my time for, mm -hmm. you know, two or three weeks to where now I can bang out three mixes in a day. It's not difficult. And then with technology, I can work on different mixes at a time. Um, and then with just the way I work, I don't know if it's ADD or what, I love bouncing around. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, man, if I'm burnt on doing um, mixing, maybe I'll tap in and I'm like, I call Banner, yo, do you need anything? He's like, you know, I engineer for David Banner. He's like, yo, yeah, I need uh, this this 808 up 2 dBs on this. Not 2 dBs, <laughs> but yeah, cut up, the, cut up the 808. I need that snare crack, and I need that, that, that guitar in your face. You know, yeah. and I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Or he's like, yo, the, the um, damn, I can't tell you another features. Damn, I'm going to tell you the features. But he's like, you know, the such and such vocals are in, and, and you know, you got to mix these vocals. And so it's just it's fun being bouncing and then jump into a video editor. Somebody's like, yo, can I get a trailer for that video? Or can I get a clean version for this? Or can I get, you know, it's, I love what I do. Yeah. I love what I do. I really do. It's all fun to me. And so it's nice Look. to be at a point of where I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: with all these, with all these hats that you're wearing, what do you feel is most entertaining to you? Which which one do you enjoy doing the most? Um, I love them all. They all have their sweet spots. <laughs> they all yeah. have their sweet spots. Yeah. So like, I love, I love shooting a video and just getting, because like with videos. I hold things in front of the lens, kind of like you put a reverb on a sound or an effect like a chorus or a delay. Mm -hmm. I hold things like crystals and different light bulbs and different things in front of the mm -hmm. camera to get effect. So that right there in itself is always interesting to me. 
I'm always kind of like mind blown watching things refract and do weird shit. Um, but I equally love taking a song that I hear, like the record we just mixed the tree sound, like the record I could hear. I'm like, oh, this sounds like a single, but it's like the vocals kind of muddy and, you know, the beats sounds cool, but nothing's really clearly defined and nothing's really sitting up. And yeah, I can put everything that I've done, DJing and A&R and everything together in that mix because I know what people want to hear. So I'm like, oh, the energy's kind of dying right here. Let me put like a boom, 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 or let me put a beat drop right here, or there's too much going on. Let me take an instrument out, or let me add a bass line. There's some mixes that, uh, you know, they'll ask me, hey, can you put an 808? This one I'm working uh, on for this uh, this new artist named Saba. He was like, yo, can you put an 808 on there? And I'm, I put the 808, I'm like, can I put a bass line? I was just hearing the bass line, and he heard it back today. He was like, yo, man, you really blessed me, you know? It's like, I love just being able to kick around and do different things and honestly just add what's needed to different things. Cause I learned that with these consultants, I've been doing a lot of um, Skype and zoom consulting sessions. Cause usually people bring me on projects for like three months or something like that. But mm-hmm. a lot of people just need pointing in the right direction. Um, yeah. But I realized everybody needs something different. Some people need to get their mix in a master ring. Some people need to figure out what kind of songs they even need to make. Some people have four different songs, totally different styles. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what, what way do you think I should go? And I'm like, that first one really mm-hmm. sounds like that's really you. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, all my friends say that's the one, too. You know, I'm like, don't fight it, <laughs> you know? Don't fight it. Yeah, yeah. Different needs. Some people have all of that. They just have no idea how to connect with people. Right. Some people, yeah. you know, so it's like some people don't know how visual everything is. Some people don't know social media. Some, yeah. So everybody's got different, um, different needs. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> exactly where you went. Exactly yeah. where you went. You know, you can't just like as a consultant, you know, I do a little side consulting, like you can't just give everybody a number seven combo. You know, everybody is in different places in their career and need different things and have different budgets, you know. So. Yeah, like the song I mentioned the other day, it didn't need an 808. It had an 808 in there already. And I love the arrangement, so they didn't need any changes. So I'm like, I don't need to force a change on here. I don't, I heard this the other day, don't create problems that don't need fixing. Mm, 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 mm. If it ain't so like, don't, a wrench, too. I feel like people try to put their stamp on stuff and they just do too much. And it's like, yeah, it is dope. That's all people care about. They really don't care about the process. Like, it's they really don't. nice that we're running stuff through the SSL. You hear it in the sound, but people don't care about that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The people only care, do I enjoy this record or not? Mm-hmm. But I want to deliver that next level of quality. I want to be like the Southern, you know, Dr. Drake, fucking Mike Dean, or my homie uh, Peasy, Lil Pat. Who did all that three six mafia sipping on some scissor and all that? They really, really yeah. raised the bar for sound. I want to do that. I really do. Yeah, that's dope. It's important, man. That's important. That's important, yeah. man. Shout out to raising the bar, man. <laughs> Woo! 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 one, man. A lot of what knowledge, are we doing? What are we doing? You know, right? Mm-hmm. Right. There's a lot of knowledge here, Bobby. It's a lot of knowledge, man. You dropping some jewels, man. So like this cat right here, DJ Burn One, man. He knows a lot of stuff, man. Like. Mixing, mastering, making beats, shooting videos, marketing, consulting, A and R, all that NFT. stuff, man. <laughs> all that stuff, man. He's NFTs, crypto, all that, man. You've got the answers, and your name ain't Sway, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I think it's about that time. If you've seen the show, then you know what time it is. If you haven't, well, that's right. It's time for Street Smarts Trivia Game with your host, DJ Bobby Hustle and that Vato Capo. Guaranteed to get your plug. Hey, we're back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, you know, you did good last time, Burn One. You know, you, you, was, 50, you was 50 50. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 50, 50, 50 50. You're still alive. You're yeah. still alive. <laughs> We're gonna give you a chance to redeem yourself so you can hold tight on that hip hop card. Yeah. You know, that's round it. two. <laughs> you know, gonna ask your question, just give us an answer. Let's try. All right, hip hop history. Here we go. What record label was <laughs> Puff Daddy fired from before going on to start <coughs> Bad Boy Records? Was it A Uptown, B Jive, or C Loud? A Uptown. Final answer? Yeah. Yeah. It was uptown! 
Look at that man some confetti. Hey. Okay. In 1993, after being fired from Uptown, Cones established a new record label, Bad Boy Entertainment, with a joint venture through Arista Records, taking the newcomer then, Christopher Wallace, better known as the Notorious B.I.G., with him. Sounded like a good move to me. That's it, right? Yeah, okay, okay. You got that one. You got that one. Capo, it's your favorite category. Man, who said that shit? This is called Who Said That Shit. We're going to read you a song lyric. All you got to do is tell us who said that shit. Here we go. I'm into distribution. I'm like Atlantic. I got the motherfuckers flying across the Atlantic. I know Pablo Noriega, the real Noriega. He owed me a hundred favors. Who said that shit? Bro, was that? Rick Ross. Rick Ross? Is that your final answer? Yeah. It was oh. Rick Ross! Hey! He's coming out swinging, Bobby. He's coming out swinging. He's coming out swinging. He's coming out swinging. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to give you that one. We're going to give you that one. All right. Well, this next category is called Hood Classic. Now, we all grew up watching Hood Classics. You know, so we're going to play you a movie clip, and all you got to do is tell us what movie it is. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Now, this is what you call a hood classic. You took your boots off, you put your feet on the table, you shit-kicking, stinky, horseman, horse-smelling motherfucker, you. You fucked me up over there. I'll stick you in a hole in the fucking desert. You understand? Who there? I apologize. Okay, get the fuck you. <laughs> what movie is that? <laughs> Final answer? Yeah. You took your boots off, you put your feet on the table, <laughs> you shit-kicking, stinky, horseman, horse-smelling motherfucker, you! You fucked me up over there, I'll stick you in a hole in the fucking desert, you understand? Move in and apologize. Okay, get the fuck you! Classic, classic. Classic, classic. Okay, classic, classic, classic. That movie right. so many times, man. Okay, just okay. cry laughing. Joe Pesci, yeah. just a tour de force performance, for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Pesci's a gangster. He plays a... I ain't never seen him not play a gangster. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, oh, man. Well, my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny. He wasn't a gangster. Right. Okay. He was still good, though. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely still good. All <laughs> right, so we got one more for you, man. You're doing good. You're doing good. All right, so far, so yeah. good right now. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to need to see some identification. This is ID check. We're going to read your government name. Just tell us who it is. My government name is Jeffrey Lamar Williams. Am I A, Young Dolph? B, Young Thug, or C, Young Jesus? B, Young Thug. Final answer? Yes, sir. <laughs> it was Young Thug! Hey, get that man some fetty. Okay. All right. I see you, I see you, I see you. Okay, you doing your thing, man. Shouts out to the guy, shouts out to the guy. You doing your thing. I think that was called redemption. Redemption. <laughs> Red Dead. Red Dead Redemption. All he day. Said, I ain't going day. out like that. <laughs> no, you get to keep that hip hop car, man. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You good. You good. You good, Don't man. Don't forget about it. <laughs> Shouts yeah. out to my guy. Hey. Hey, Burn One. What, what for up and coming producers out there that, because you've got a gang of, of placements, for upcoming producers that are, trying to get placements right now um what would you say is the key to going into it to make sure that you get paid on the back end or that you're covered on the business side of it finding you a lawyer you can trust mm -hmm. and then uh making yourself more knowledgeable about the business learning about how things are done mm. <clears throat> learning about what the what the basics are, what you deserve, what you should have, um, what your rights are, what you give up when you give over the stems, uh, you know, just kind of, just kind of everything. You should inform yourself, basically. And there's information out there. You should just inform yourself. Um, that way, you don't get taken advantage of, for sure. Knowledge is power, as Knowledge you proved that in round two. Hey! <laughs> All right. Speaking of producers, I'm hosting an Ableton workshop, an official Ableton workshop at Tweed Recording on October the 6th. Oh, uh, Y'all can RSVP oh. to that. Um, yeah, man. That, that's going to oh. be real dope. Oh, I'm going to do a track breakdown. I'm going to show people how to make samples. 
and I'm gonna show just like different creative techniques I use in uh, Ableton 11. Okay, so let me ask you this. Is that your tool of choice? I use Ableton, I used to rock out of it. I know a lot of DJs use it for remixes. I made some bangers. It's great for sampling. Is that your tool of choice? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so I work on a lot of different DAWs. My main thing now I'm working on is MPC Live 2. I mm. love that. I got that in like December and I've just been going crazy on that. But I like the uh, I like using that in conjunction with Ableton because sometimes you can chop and warp and do things in Ableton that you can't. And then I'm gonna plug in Junkie, I have like over 5,000 plugins. So wow. I love having being able to just kind of like put a couple plugins on something and just make it sound so weird or easily reverse it or easily do certain things. And then the push is a real versatile tool too. So I just love, uh, sometimes we work in FL and then I'm always mixing Pro Tools. So mm -hmm. I kind of jump around, just keep it fresh. But I love doing drums on this NPC. It's so dope. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people say they love drums on the NPC. It gives them that classic <laughs> feel with the pads, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not like yeah. a controller. You got the sounds in it and it's gritty and it's got that 8 bit <laughs> sound, fat, funky, like a old fat lady. <laughs> it does. And I'm so spoiled. I got David Banner to show me how to. How to work oh it. Oh my God. Because mm. I had to learn how to work it to track out his beats because he uses the MPC 2500. So he oh, showed me how to use it to track it out. And then I made a couple drum patterns on there and just started mm -hmm. messing around. And then the live two came out. I was like, I got to get it. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he still got a floppy disk he's sticking in his MPC 2500? Uh, I don't think it's floppy disk. It's um, it's like a zip, zip, disk. zip disk. And then, but also you can plug it into the computer. So I'll make drum kits and stuff for him. And okay. so he could just download them and just plug it in. I think USB, and it okay. loads it up. Oh, it must be the new yeah. 2500, because I had an old school. Or oh, it's a 2000. Yeah, it's the XL. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, oh, yeah. It's either 2500 or 3500. One of them. Yeah. Mm. But either way, it goes. It's so, an classic. Yeah. So, so, so give us, give us, give us a little exclusive, man. When can we expect that David Banner project? Oh, God Box Two is on the way. It's on the way. He's, <laughs> That's it. he's got That's a it. lot. Of, he's got, man. He's got. <laughs> He's got some real dope shit on there. I'm really excited for y'all to see. Uh, the people he's got on the album, the songs that he has with him, more importantly. Um, and just overall, it just feels really awesome to be... Because I've known Banner since I was about 18. 18 wow. or 19. He was hosting... He hosted, like, the second tape after that T.I. tape. I think it was, like, my fourth tape he mm -hmm. hosted. Um, and so... It's, it's really dope to be working on an album with him because he's so dope as a mentor and just a friend and just a powerful figure um, mm -hmm. with all the knowledge he has. And he's not afraid to share at all, um, dope. which I've never been afraid to share either. So it's nice to be around somebody like that and, and get it in return because I'm always sharing everything I can. So it's, it's always nice hearing stuff from him and being like, oh, Dre said this right here and DJ Quick said this and all these lessons yeah. that he has. Um, and then being able to work on these songs and develop the album, and now it's like getting close to, to being done. Uh, it's, it's really exciting, because this is the first album I'm fully done with them, uh, pretty wow. much from start to finish, like top to bottom, so it's like my first yeah. real, because I was recording Gucci for Chicken Talk and all that, so I've been recording people at the house when I was like 15, I've been recording and shit, but this is like the first full album that I've done that wasn't just like just some shit where independent, you know, mm -hmm. it's still wow. independent, but Banner, yeah, you know, it's major. Like, it's major like, well, like, I was literally listening. Ricky reminds me, I was listening to Cadillac on Toy Twos when I picked Ricky up when we first started working together. You know, like, I was like, <laughs> he was like, I felt like you were trying to establish the vibe by playing that when you picked me up. You know, I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, maybe I was. So it's like, it's, it's beautiful to feel everything. And Banner's, Banner's just so supportive, you know. I feel like yeah. the industry can be so fake and everything, you know, but having certain people like him in your life is just. It's just such a blessing, and yeah. I can't really thank him enough. Man, wow, man that's and not only that, man, it's like people sleep on him when it comes to the production, bro. Like, I mean, dog, fucking beast, man. Like, everybody's talking about these verses and, you know, JD and Puffy and all. Man, what what about Banner? Let's get Banner in there and just crush some motherfucking people, dog. They don't want to see him. They forget he's got records like Thug Holiday. Mm. You know? Uh, like Man. rubber band oh. band and all this, you know. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't really want to see him. I don't really want to see him. I think a fun one would be like um, maybe him and Jazzy Faye or somebody like that. That'd be Ooh. fun, you know, because they're cool. Ooh. I think that would be a, a really dope, uh, fun one. Because I feel like 
the, the matches are good when they kind of like line up. I feel like when they don't align, like the Scott Storch and Benny Fresh, that was just like apples and oranges. You know, like you cannot yeah. compare lean back to hot, you know, I need a hot girl. It's just like <laughs> two totally different, two totally different. Yeah. It would have been more fun for Lil John versus Benny Fresh. That would have been, yeah, no you shit. know, that would have been like dope, like party anthems or, yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. You know, DJ Smurf, you know, Collie Park or, you know, mm-hmm. something like that, you know, to where it's like, it's a fun thing. Like that was just, <laughs> oh. I don't know, but man, bro, Ben is a beast. Oh my gosh! And then working with him, I just had like such a great appreciation for it. his process and you know just who he is as a person. Right, right. Hell Hell yeah. That's it, man. That's it, dog. Well, man, Burn. Well, I mean, dog, we've covered a lot, dog. And there's, I mean, we could probably keep going and talk and talk because there's so much to talk about. You have so much history in this industry, dog. You put in so much work, man. Um, is there anything that we haven't spoke on that you feel like we need to cover? Um, man, there's just a couple things. I mean, we've uh, we scored Snow on the Bluff. Oh, that was a big independent movie. Um, we scored that. We did like the mo- the trailer, the music for the trailer. So if you look up like Snow on the Bluff trailer two, the actual trailer, um, we did the music for that. Um, so that was really dope. We actually worked on sound design for the 1917 that war movie and Justice League mm-hmm. movie trailers. So we did like sound design, like weird gun sounds and different shit. Um, man, so we do all types of stuff, man. Fuck oh, yeah, dog. That's dope, man. So burn one, man. You, you came back on the Street Smarts trivia. You know what I'm saying? You did your thing. You know you redeemed yourself. <laughs> you still got your hip hop card, but <laughs> but we ain't gonna let you get out of here that easy. You know what I'm saying? We know you the man. You you modest, you humble, but we're gonna put you in the hot seat real quick before you get out of here though. Let's you do know it. what I'm saying? We definitely gotta put you in the hot seat. Here we go. Ooh, that's gotta burn. We in the hot seat. Uh-oh. You know you done fucked up, right? You know you done <laughs> fucked up. Was it 11.45? <laughs> right, you know you done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yes. So what this is, ma'am, this is a mental brain exercise. We're going to do some rapid fire. We're going to give you two options. Just pick one or the other. Whichever one comes to your mind, don't think about it. Don't say both. Don't say neither. Just pick one or the other. You ready? Here we go. Henny or Ciroc? I don't drink anymore. Water or tea? Tea. Catfish or sushi? Sushi. No limit or cash money? Mm. That's fine. Jermaine Dupree or Puff Daddy? Same. Yesterday would be been different, but I gotta, I gotta say Jermaine Dupree, dog. He, he <laughs> gave a convincing argument in the video. I would have said yesterday, <laughs> I would have said Diddy. I saw the video, I was like, I can't argue with him. Right? Okay. okay. 50,000 up front or 50% on the back end? 50% on the back. 650 dollar bills or 55 dollar bills no calculators <laughs> mental math <laughs> what'd you say 650 dollar bills or 55 dollar bills first one 650s okay a, a million in cash or a million in bitcoin definitely a million in bitcoin for fucking sure you gonna cash out or you gonna reinvest I'll cash out immediately. <laughs> Kick to the nuts or poke <laughs> in the eye. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out immediately, dog. Would you rather have a kick to the nuts or a poke in the eye? Oh man, I'm not an eye person. Kick to the nuts. 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 Kick to would you would you rather live a long, boring life or a short, eventful one? Short, eventful one. Ooh, wow. Shouts out to the guy. Shouts out to the guy, man. Shouts yeah. out to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, Ooh, it says a lot about you. It does. It does. That's, 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 that's always a hard question, you know what I'm saying? But I, I agree. I think it's short, eventful one, man. Like, who wants to go out? Fuck it. Let's live this shit to the fullest, bro. You know fullest, what I'm saying? Man. Hey, you, you've you've had a, for a good hey, time. You've had a hell of a run, dog. You've had a hell of a run, so Yeah, man, it's crazy. I really feel like I'm just getting started, bro. That's the wild part. It's like all yeah. the shit that's 
that has happened thus far is like felt like the warm up. Mm. Yeah, now, and that's like, that's really about to kick off. That's dope. I'm working on my album. Hey, hey, Finally. working on the album. Working DJ on Burn album. one. I got some dope features already, and I already know. Got some real interesting stuff going down, so. Be on the lookout. I'm definitely finally dropping the album. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I haven't announced it, so here we go. Here we go. Exclusive. 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 DJ Bird one. <laughs> it's gonna be called the neighbors. The neighbors. Uh oh. The neighbors. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds like a scary movie. <laughs> Do we know our neighbors? Do we? Do you oh. know your neighbors? I don't know my neighbors, Zach. Nah, I try not to, but they won't turn their music down. I got a neighbor with a studio in the garage, and he be banging on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's me. Weed. It's me. <laughs> it's me. I'm him. Right. It's I'm me, like, and I'm mixing. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's cool, but he's got a 24-inch subwoofer that rattles my fucking house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, bro. The sub yeah. game. I know I had to cut my sub out because it was shaking my neighbor at the last spot. It was shaking my neighbor's house. So I was like, oh, man. Oh, no, I, I got some nice land now, so come on, what's up? Yeah. Oh, boss, boss. Yeah, I got, I got scary, I got scary neighbors. Every time I leave the house, they look at me like I'm gonna rob them or something. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing out here? <laughs> I'm like, I own this house just like you do, dog. Like, right, bro. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, I paid my but taxes. Yeah, bro. That's it. That's it. But Burwell, man, once again, dog, it's always a pleasure. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule and coming rocking with us. Man, you keep doing dope shit, and we will continue to support, and hopefully you will come and join us again, bro. Man, please, bro. This is so well produced. If I do a podcast, I'm hiring y'all to do my podcast. <laughs> hey. Like, this is so dope. I really feel like I was on, like, Wheel of Fortune or some shit. Like, this is really dope. Hey. You know? This, yeah. this is fire. I'm digging that's, it. Man. That's Good fire, shit, man. man. But, but appreciate the positive vibes, man. This is a really dope thing y'all got going on. And again, Capo, bro, I always appreciate you for everything you've done for me, bro. You know, everything, bro. We appreciate you. Likewise, dog. Uh, it's love, bro. So next time, man. family. Much love, hey. dog. Good meeting you, Bobby. Much love, man. Yes, sir. Everybody out there. Hey, shouts out. Hey. Yeah. Yo, man, DJ Burn one, man, he got a hell of a track record, man. I, man, I like, I knew he was dope. I knew he had some joints out, but like, he's actually part of Atlanta history, and like, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah, man, he's dog. Part of Atlanta history. Oh, bro, he's part. Of, he's not even Atlanta history. He's part of music history. That man has done so much and accomplished so much. I mean, dog, like just to be able to sit here and pick his brain and get some information and hear some of these dope ass stories. Like I said, we could have just kept going and going and going. Cause there's so like, dog, there's probably, so we're going to, we're going to get off this shit and we're going to be like, damn, we forgot to ask him this. Or we didn't talk about this. He's going to have so many stories that we'd even get to cover, but that's what's dope. Cause next time we come back, we get to cover all that shit once again. And I'm sure he'll have done a fucking hundred other things right, and have right. fucking other albums and movies like and soundtracks. <laughs> NFTs and oh, come shit. on, bro. Oh, shit, <laughs> you already know, man. So Bobby, you already know, man. Once again, it's like you know they can't wait a whole week to see the next one. So we got to leave them with this week's prescription. And this week's prescription is something real simple. You're never wrong doing something right. So always do what's right, man. Bobby, you man, know what it is. It's powerful, huh? man. It's powerful. So always do your best to do what's right. And what's right is if you're on the internet, go to youtube.com slash audio meds podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Tap that thumbs up. Ding the bell. Follow us on all the social media channels. We appreciate the love. Leave a comment. Tell us how dope we are. Tell us how much you hate us. It don't even matter. We might even send you some merch, man. You know, Capo, who we got next week? Audio Meds is more than just a podcast. It's the home for everything hip-hop. From live interviews to street smarts trivia and a ton of laughs with your host, DJ Bobby Hustle and that Vato Capo. You feeling down and need a fix? Time for Audio Meds. You wanna laugh and learn a bit? It's the Audio Meds. The host on this shit, it's the audio mix. Turn it up, you know it's love on the audio mix. Audio meds, they're good for you.